Hello, and welcome to my video. Today we will be talking about comma-separated values and how to read them in plus plus. There are many ways to store data in a file, but one way that is extremely popular is the CSV file or the comma separated values. The reason why it's so popular is because the data contained within these files is structured. You can read the data in in a structured pattern. All CSV files have on the first line a row of headers. Those headers tell you what the data on the rows that follow mean. So as you can see, this CSV file has the headers first, last, and birth year. And on each row below, you will find a first name, a last name, and a birth year. If a piece of data is not known, then it is just left out, but you must leave a space for it in case later you figure out that piece of data and need to store it in your file. There is no nice way to read these in C++, so today we will learn how to read them in, in C++ without using any extra libraries. Let's start by opening up our file into an if stream variable from the F stream library. We can either statically open the file, or if we want to be more scalable, we could read in the file name from the user and open that file name that the user enters in a loop similar to the one shown. But for simplicity's sake, I will just statically open the file for this video. Next, let's get a line from the file and see what gets output. And as you can see, you get the headers from the file. So let us get two lines from the file and see what we get. Well, now we get the first line of data. So let us break these three pieces of data apart. How can we do this? Well, we need to first find the comma. Once we've found the comma, we can put everything before that comma into one variable and everything after the comma into another variable. To find the comma, we can use the strings find method on a comma, which will give us the location of the first comma in the string, aka this comma right here. So let us output that location and see what we get. And we get six because the comma is in the zero, one, two, three, four, five, sixth indice of the line. So we can take a substring of the line from the beginning of the line up to that comma location, which will give us the first name from in here, because it will start at the beginning of the line and go up to that comma location. If I compile and run that, you'll see that I get mini because it took that substring from the beginning of the line up to the comma. And how do we place everything after the comma into the line again? Because if I just really quick output the line, you'll see that I get everything still in the line. Well, I can just take a substring of the line from the comma location plus one, because we do not want to include the comma. We want to start after the comma up to the end of the line. And now, if I output this, you'll see that I just get everything after the comma. So now we've put everything before the comma in first and everything after the comma in line. So if I quickly output everything in first and everything in line, you will see that I get mini is inside of first, aka everything before the comma, and mouse comma 1928 is in the line variable, aka everything after the comma. And now to get the last name out and the birth year out, well, we can use this same logic. So if I add a variable for last, copy these three lines, paste them, and then save to that last variable, I can now output the last name, which will give me mouse in the last in everything after the comma in the line. Since I'm at the last piece of data, I no longer need to use these three lines to break out this final piece of data, but I probably want that final piece of data in an integer variable. So let's add a variable for that birth year and try and save everything that's in line to that variable. And let's see what we get. It's a compiler error. You cannot put a string inside an integer. So what do you do? Well, you can use your stoy to turn that string to an integer. If it was a double, you could use stod. And if it was a float, you could use stuff. But let's use stoy. And when I do that, you'll see I no longer get a compiler error. So now let's output all three of our variables, the first name, last name, and birth year. And we'll see that we get our three pieces of data output to the screen from that line from the file. So now let's do that for every line in the file. And we'll add a while loop that does our get lining. We'll wrap our code in a block of code. And then we'll output our first name, last name, and birth year as we are running along. And when we are done going through our file, we will 
close the file. So now when I compile and run this, you see that I get the first name, last name, and birth year for every single character. And well, why is mini not printing? It's because I forgot to take that git line out. So let's take out that accidental git line. And now you'll see that I get mini, Mickey, Donald, Daisy, Goofy, Pluto, which are all the characters from inside the file. If you wanted to read the data from the CSV into parallel arrays, you would first make your parallel arrays and a red count, and then you just read into the parallel arrays rather than variables and increment your red count each time you are done with this loop. And while you do not want to read too much into your array, you probably want to check on here that says, and your red count is not bigger than your max size. We could then output all the data from our arrays after we have read in the data in this loop, or do whatever we need to do with the data contained inside our parallel arrays. So for every comma that you have in a line in a CSV, you need to have these three lines one time. So as you can see, I have two commas in each line. So I have those three lines two times because I need to break apart my data on a comma twice. And that is how you deal with CSVs in C++ without using any extra libraries. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.